We were talking to Nigel Elliott today, and Nigel has a rather beast of a car, a TR7 V8 with twin turbos. Uh, could you tell us a bit about it, Nigel? How long you had this car? Um, since the early 2000s, um, it was an old tarmac rally car from North Wales originally um, and uh, had a three and a half litre um, V8 in it at that time on the carburetors and I ran it for one season and then I built a 4.6 litre V8 for it, normally aspirated, ran that again for a, a few years and then decided I needed more power so that's hence the twin turbos, so another rebuild and lower compression and uh, twin turbos. Okay, so so that in itself is a, is a, a really serious engine. The four six or you know was normally well they were three and a half the Rover Buick weren't they? And then four six was pushing them out, and they're possibly pushing nearer five liters. The best ones now, perhaps. Yeah, you can get up to five point three. In fact, there's an MGB that runs a five point three, normally aspirated. But because I'm turbocharging this, I wanted to try and keep as much um, ceiling face on the top of the bores. So I've left it at four six. It's essentially a Range Rover uh, four point six block, but it has top hat liners, which are uh, a better arrangement because the old four sixes did leak a bit. So it runs some special liners. It runs Chevy four pis forged pistons, um, which I get in from the US. Uh, um, so it's low compression about. 7.8 to 1 and um, otherwise it's a fairly standard build build it's got um, uh, ported heads um, but other than that it's just balanced and so it runs on standard comrades revs to about 6.2 and makes towards 500 horsepower so it's that's pretty serious 500 horsepower i remember these back in the day when tony pond was one of the works drivers wasn't he i think pear eckland also drove them as rally cars and they were pretty competitive but again they would have been three and a half liter uh, were they normally aspirated then? Yeah, they were normally aspirated, but they were making about 320 brake then, but they revved a bit harder, seven and a half towards eight. So um, they were good builds in those days. In fact, I, I used to work with one of the guys who used to build the engines for them, for one of the ex-Abingdon guys. So um, yeah, no, they were pretty well sorted cars, even in those days. Question I wanted to ask, you know, you, you've been competing for many years. So when, well look, we're pretty chilled now, aren't we? But when you go to the line, does your sort of ante sort of up? Yes, it does. You get the old butterflies and you just keep tightening the seat belts and squatting down in the seat and checking you've turned everything on that you should have turned on. And um, yeah, just sort of, uh, there is a little bit of butterflies, I would say. And not too bad at most of these hills. The place I suffer the most is Goodwood if I do, do a sprint because Goodwood is so fast and that does make you really think about it. But once you get going, you forget and the red mist comes down and then you start flying. <laughs> Do you, so, so you mentioned Goodwood then, because, with, you know, obviously on a hill like this, what have you got, five, six speed, five speed box have you, and then what would the car be geared for potentially? Okay, it's um, in, in fifth, this would do something like 160, um, but I only use four gears on, on the hills. In fact, here I only use three. So um, Chelsea Walsh, I'd be using four. So um, by the time you get to crossing at Chelsea, I'm in fourth, and then just down to third for the S's and back up to fourth on the finish straight. It's so torquey with the turbos. It'll come out of top S spinning the rear wheels in, in third gear. Two or three years ago, you had rather a big moment at Loughton. I, I remember that, and you obviously remember it better than me. But you've had to totally rebuild and reshell this car. How long has that taken? It has taken me three years, basically, from the crash. It was August 2020, and uh, I went off just after the kink and Cedar Strait got on the grass and uh, launched up a bank, so a big end over end roll, and that um, destroyed the car, really. The shell was too badly damaged to use again. And luckily, I had one that I'd purchased some years earlier, a spare one in storage. So um, it took, although that took, you know, a good year, year's worth of welding, because TR7s tend to suffer from the old metal moth, and so it did take quite a lot to get a strong shell again and a, a new welding cage and it's sorted but um, it's taken a while back together so I'm being very tentative with it at the moment. Well Nigel that's, that's amazing well listen it's fantastic to see you back on the hills lovely car I do love it and uh, obviously you're in a pretty hot class with all these boys have a brilliant weekend and we will catch up with you another day okay, thanks thank thanks for chatting much. to us yeah thank you very much